What's good sports gamers and with the first tip of the year I'll be going over with you how to dominate in the post in NBA 2K20. So right, let's get it. First I'm going to go over the most necessary skill and that's how to enter and leave the post. To get into the post up position you hold the right trigger when you're down low and the player will turn his back to the defender. And then to turn around and face up you simply let go of the left trigger. With ball handlers who can post up a little bit, you can get yourself into post up position by driving to the rim then hitting the left trigger to get into position as well as getting post touches the traditional way big men get them by already being down low, then hitting left trigger to post up. Now to leave the post to face up, you simply just let go of the left trigger button and the player will face up with the defender. For ball handlers and big men alike, you almost never want to face up when you have already began dribbling as the ball will be in the prime area for it to get stolen by the defender. Of course the worry is multiplied by a thousand for big men so you want to avoid facing up while already having dribbled with them entirely. Now when you face up with the defender without dribbling you're now in the triple threat position which is a position where you can do one of three things pass, dribble, or shoot. Defending somebody in this position you know how nerve wracking it is because he has multiple ways to beat you from here and you feel vulnerable. Guys who have a respectable shot can find a lot of success with this as a defender now has to decide should he play up, back, or whatever. Somebody like an Anthony Davis or a Carl Anthony Towns is nearly unguardable from this position as they're able to use their money jumper and speed to keep the defender off balance, which can negate your opponent having a strong bruiser type defender down low. As a defending somebody with a nice face up game makes him use his lack of speed instead of banging into a brick wall. Next move I'm going to go over is post pivot which changes the direction your player is facing in the post. And you do that by holding the left trigger to post up then aim the right stick up. You can do this whether you have dribbled the ball or not. This can help protect you against extra defenders coming over and losing the ball by shielding it with your body giving you extra time to get a pass off. Next up is learning how to dribble to the middle of the court. You do so by holding the left trigger and now the right trigger. Now follow me here, you then aim the left stick towards the middle then let go of the left trigger and your player will launch off the defender towards the paint in hopes of getting a clean path to the rim. Once you spin it's you versus him, you're no longer in the post so your arsenal of layups, dunks and such are available to you now as well. That I will also make a video on how to attack the paint soon enough. But you can combine your steps, spins and such off driving to the key if your path gets walled off. So remember that. Here George was able to get the drop on Danny Green and use his space once he got by him to get an easy score. Davis wasn't able to get a clean blow by on Harold but he gets a good enough look that causes the user defender to be unable to distract the shot. Next to drive baseline. Driving to the key and baseline are similar so they should be easy to remember. To go baseline you hold the left trigger as well as the right trigger again. Then aim the left stick directly at the baseline so that means up on 2k view. Then let go of the left trigger and your player will spin baseline. On this baseline attempt I threw in a pump fake which I'll go over later after getting good position on my drive to get the user in the air and I was able to finish. Here Davis gets the same type of animation and gets a foul on the play. And here Durant gets a clean escape from Justice Winslow to put Bam on the poster. Next up is the drop step. Its purpose is to box out the defender guarding you as you spin around as you use your body to shield them off to get a shot off. And to do so you hold the left trigger, aim the left stick left or right towards the hoop then tap X or square on PlayStation on your controller. Most people visualize a drop step as the guy going baseline, throwing a shack elbow and dunking on people. But you can also do it towards the middle of the court as well. It's all about where you're aiming the left stick. Say you're on the right block. If you aim the left stick directly to the left, he goes towards the middle. Now if you aim it up, he goes baseline. And the reverse is so on the left block. You want to slide your finger to the direction you want to take the drop step after backing down the defender in one continuous motion, aka not lifting up your finger. Performing either direction you obviously have to hit the shot button again while he's doing his animation to complete it or else he will do a pump fake. Here's what happens when you forget to hit the button again and he does the pump fake accidentally then you quickly go back up with it. Here's a more streamlined version with MB going up against Carly Stein. And Ben Simmons getting completely around Steph. 
Also notice how Porzingis' defender completely gets pushed out the way when he does his drop step. Now for the spin or drive step back. To do this you hold both the left and right triggers then move the right stick directly to the left or right quickly. The left or right determines whether you're going to fake a spin or a drive to the hoop before you step back. There's three different step back moves from the post in the game but the drive step back looks like the other two so you really only need to know this move. You may only want to use this with guards though because of their shooting off the dribble ability and the drive option that presents itself here if the defender overcommits. Against the user it's more effective because of the like I mentioned driving opportunity if they get antsy and jump thinking you're going to shoot. But against the computer you should generate enough space if your shot is quick enough you'll be fine getting decent shots off of this. Now for the aggressive back down. To do so you hold the left trigger and right trigger then move the left stick towards the defender and watch as your player tries to big man his way to the hoop. This is purely a strength move so NBA players who lack the post move skills or if you don't want to know any moves if you have an ox down low he should get you close enough due to his strength. Somebody like Shaq you want to do this move all day. Or if you have a clear mismatch down low it's funny watching how fast you can push a weaker defender under the hoop. Again Porzing is dominating as he pushes the defender almost under the hoop with the aggressive back down before executing the drop step. NMB making Klay Thompson look like a little boy. Notice how much faster he's able to push him underneath the hoop. Next is the post layup. To do so you hold the left trigger, move the left stick towards the hoop and hold the right stick up to the left or up and to the right. Your player must have a decent layup rate in the fight through the defender's contest on this. Now let's talk about how to do the post hook. You hold the left trigger and while letting go of the left stick, move the right stick up and to the left or up and to the right. And whichever direction is going away from the basket is the side he will attempt the hook going away from the hoop. Now for the post fade. You hold the left trigger and aim the right stick down and to the left or down and to the right. And the direction you pick selects where the player will fade. The fade is a specialty of nine big men to get their shot off in the post. Wade was a fan of it, Kobe, KD, all of them. And of course the greatest post fade of all, Dirk. You want to pull it off when you notice you got the defender going backwards due to you backing them down. You see with Durant as soon as I get the defender moving backwards, I hit him with the fade and they have no way of recovering. Now for the post shimmy hook. Hold the left trigger and without touching the left stick, hold the right trigger and then move and hold the right stick up to the left or up and to the right. The shimmy buys you a little bit of time to get your hook shot off. This mainly should be used against the computer. You see the computer takes a minute to react to the shack hook and he gets a wide open shot. They will react about a second too late to properly contest the shot every time. And next is the post shimmy fade. The Dwayne Wade staple is performed by holding the left trigger and while letting go of the left stick, hold the right trigger and move the right stick down to the left or down and to the right. Again these are mainly used versus the computer as it's quite easy to guard as a human. Next up is the post hop. Which you perform by holding the left trigger and hold the left stick to the left, right or down. Then tap X or square on your controller and your player makes a big leap whichever direction you aim towards. You also want to make sure to hit the shot button again before the animation is finished or else he will pump fake. Now to pump fake in the post. All you have to do is for every shot that requires you to press square X twice to finish it, don't. And any right stick shot, let go before he finishes the shot and he will end up pump faking it. And to perform an up and under, hold the left trigger and as soon as your player fakes, move the right stick again and your player will perform an up and under move. And lastly, the post dunk attempt. You want to hold both the left and right trigger buttons and then aim the left and right stick up. You want to attempt this when you're right in the restricted area. Sorry people, I hope I was able to help you out and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask in the comments down below. Of course introducing badges, different ratings and animations can help or hurt each move but I wanted to go over the basics first before I get into the more detailed post game videos for you guys. So stay tuned here for more NBA 2K20 tutorials. 
and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching and be good, y'all.